start. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this session, Innovating Data Science Pipelines Through Collaboration. Um, I would like to introduce and uh, ask my esteemed uh, speakers uh, this afternoon, uh, Albert Park and Mike Harnish, to introduce themselves uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about your role. So, Al, why don't we start with you? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Al Park. I'm the Senior Director of Bioinformatics Engineering at Moderna uh, Therapeutics. I joined there uh, March of 2023, so not too much of an old timer the way that Dave Johnson earlier had been. Um, but uh, yeah, bioinformatics engineering is uh, pretty niche kind of functionality within the research computational scope, computational sciences scope. Um, I've been working in the industry for over two decades now, um, and I've worked at both small uh, companies as well as very large organizations, and so everybody's at different stages. And um, at this point in Moderna's life, they're kind of going through the natural growing pains of migrating from a startup phase company into a more mature company at this time. So, And Mike? I'm Mike Harnish. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the president and co-founder of KSM Technology Partners. Uh, we are a systems integrator and domino consulting partner based here in the Philadelphia area. Last year, we celebrated our, our uh, 20th anniversary. Wow. Um, and we are, um, our, our experience with Domino um, has mostly been with statistical computing environments, implementing uh, statistical computing environments and uh, integrating Domino with our customers' systems. Um, and as we'll see, this was a, a sort of a, a, a stretch for us to uh, learn a little bit more about um, a, a different area of, of uh, more uh, research um, than uh, we had worked with before. So. Um, Albert, uh, Al, to set the stage, uh, can you tell us about what were the main challenges that Moderna faced that uh, set the stage for the project? Sure. So um, I know many in the room are not bioinformaticians, so uh, to give a little context. So uh, in the bioinformatics world, um, many of what you actually just saw a little bit um, from a flow perspective that Domino provides, uh, the bioinformatics community had actually already kind of consolidated too in multiple different type of workflow languages. Um, and so um, a lot of the kind of bioinformatics development process is really utilizing um, a single, let's say, EC2 instance that has a lot of resources because in, in a stepwise um, manner within the workflow, um, people, when they're doing their bioinformatics development work, they're usually resourcing for that one task that really requires a lot of horsepower to be able to get through it. Um, and so you can imagine that a lot of uh, uh, kind of wasted computing resources, checking out a very large instance to do your development work um, can be problematic. And so Moderna has been uh, making a very concerted effort to try and be cost conscious in the cloud uh, infrastructure um, and so Domino um, being able to try to do development work uh, using Nextflow as the language within Domino's environment helped streamline some of those costs and efficiencies uh, that we were lacking from a development process. And that helped you consolidate some of the research with the work pipelines essentially in the same environment. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Love that. Um, can you give us an overview? Uh, what did the team that helped support you look like, and like, what type of work did KSM help you with? Yeah, sure. So um, we got introduced to KSM um, by you know through through Domino, um, and you know part of the problem scope, as I just described, is that uh, bioinformatics um, scientists or computational uh, scientists were actually do doing their development in single EC2 instances, and um, to mature a bioinformatics. Um, Pipeline, which was you know perhaps executed as a Jupyter notebook assembly of tools, um, into a more robust engineered solution that leveraged something like Nextflow. Uh, we wanted the ability to do that development process um, inside of Domino to leverage a little bit of jo that jobs functionality. Um, and so, being introduced to KSM, we said, "Hey, you know, this is the workflow language that the bioinformatics community is really consolidating against. It would be great if we could leverage the jobs functionality within Domino." Um, hey, you know, could we actually get um, a Nextflow compatible plugin into Domino that took advantage of the jobs functionality within it? 
and Mike, uh, how did you approach that? It sounds like they had an existing code base and you needed to enable it. Yes. So um, first I remember when I first talked with Al about this, we were talking about pipelines that we would worked with in, within Domino for statistical computing that can take minutes, hours to run. And I happened to mention that and Al said, I think you said days think weeks for some of the larger pipelines, the production pipelines, the amount of processing, um, the amount of resources that they're using. So that just to set the scale for what, that, that's, a, that's an order of magnitude or a couple orders of magnitude more of a, of, of a problem than we had uh, considered before. So as we thought about what we wanted to do, by the way, we don't have a lot of slides here. Um, so there's, I think, one, two, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Opposite direction. Thank you, sorry. Um, we had some objectives. What did we want to do to enable Al and his team to accomplish their work? So the first one was NextFlow pipelines use a lot of highly, highly specialized tools um, and they're, um, a, a diff lots of different varieties. They're written in a variety of languages um, and they're uh, stressing the NextFlow community really stresses using containerization so that you have a very reproducible environment to execute these in um, that you can spin up quickly and, and use. Um, we wanted to be able to support all of that tooling from within Domino as well. So that was one thing we, we certainly wanted to do. Um, as Al said, we wanted to be enable scale up um, through parallel process execution. We could have, if you're familiar with Domino, we could have started a workspace, a very large workspace with lots and lots of memory and lots and lots of um, CPU allocated to it. We could have left it running for days. Um, and there would be some times when, a lot of times, um, when it wouldn't be used at its full capacity and it would just be, it'd be a waste of, of, of resources and a waste of money. There also will be times, however, when there are a lot of jobs um, that are expensive that are happening in parallel need to run. They could easily tax that um, environment and uh, keep it to the point where it's, you couldn't, uh, it, it, it couldn't grow and some jobs would actually like have to be retried or die because they were for, they'd be starved for a lack of resources. So we wanted to be able to enable those to scale up using the scalability of the cloud um, and Domino's underlying um, infrastructure with Kubernetes. Um, we wanted to be, as I said, we wanted to economically marshal them so that when we weren't using them, then we would spin them back down so we wouldn't be paying for anything more than we needed to accomplish this task in a pipeline at any given time. Um, we certainly wanted to do this without having to customize Domino. Um, and but most importantly, having looking at their, the next flow pipeline code, we wanted to write this so that we didn't have to make any changes to it at all. That was the real challenge for us. I didn't want to have to tell Al, well, we got it working, but you're going to have to rewrite all of your pipelines. <laughs> that, wouldn't, that wouldn't have flown. So we, are, we wanted to be able to sort of externalize this configuration so that everything worked um, without any changes like that. So. Can you tell us more about, um, you mentioned the bioinformatics community coalescing around um, NextFlow, but what was especially appealing to you and your team at Moderna around it? Yeah, sure. So the bioinformatics community um, consolidating, starting to consolidate or has been consolidating around NextFlow as the workflow language. And uh, part of that uh, has been actually open sourced bioinformatics pipeline. So there's a community, um, there's a Git repo, for example, on GitHub called uh, NF Core, and it has a whole host of uh, ready made bioinformatics pipelines to address different types of sequence based assay uh, data processing. Um, that is contributed to by many of the thought leaders in the space, whether that be academics or institutions that are contributing to that uh, as a mechanism to help optimize. Um, and be inclusive of many of the different tools that could be used at each individual step within the pipeline itself. Um, and so, you know, I think generally, and it's kind of a, a little bit of the theme here is data reproducibility, right? So um, in the research space, especially in the bioinformatics field, 
um, you know, uh, maybe a decade ago or maybe 15 years ago, people would make publications and uh, have really struggled trying to re reproduce the, the type of data analysis and, and work that was being done. But by having consolidated to this kind of community-driven effort to standardize to certain types of pipelines with the flexibility of switching between tools at certain steps, um, you have uh, regained that reproducibility, right? Um, and I wanted to touch on a point that Mike uh, made earlier about really allowing the engineering team to take advantage of the next fuse, um, specifically within Domino. It was really important for us to not have to deviate too far away from uh, already the engineers being very comfortable using Nextflow as a workflow language. And to that point, uh, maybe a little bit too into the weeds here, but uh, one of the essentially one of the only steps that you actually have to do to modify the workflow itself is to set up one one configuration, one set of configuration file. Um, once you've done that, uh, the Nextflow workflow will execute in Domino just like it could ex execute in a single EC2 instance or just straight up AWS batch. Can you provide us some examples now that we talked about that, um, how the pipelines um, help you? Um, where did you see special gains in efficiency? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think um, Mike has a slide where our, um, we, as one of the kind of one of the example pipelines that we asked um, Mike to stand up for us in our Domino environment is a very standard uh, pipeline, an RNA seq pipeline that's used heavily by the community. Um, internally at Moderna, it has many of the tools that uh, Moderna specifically wants to use. Um, and so um, we had him essentially try to take a public version of the RNA-seq pipeline and deploy it within Domino. It would have to recreate all of the um, specific Docker container, Docker images, and bring them into the Domino environment so that it would execute natively um, within Domino uh, using a using a test sample case uh, mm. samples of data and he was able to successfully show in case some were uh, able to successfully show that they could do that which is really critical because for Moderna what we actually do is we leverage some of the community driven pipelines um, and we will fork away not because we necessarily want to fork away from the pipeline itself uh, but because there are some inefficiencies built into how the pipelines are built in the community because they're trying to service everyone globally, essentially. Uh, but within Moderna, we want to really be cost optimized. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we will actually uh, streamline or reduce some of the um, flexibility in the pipeline um, or make sometimes make even um, optimized uh, improvements to the workflow itself and deploy it internally. So that development process is really critical for us um, um, with a cost cons consciousness on mind. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And what role does um, NF Core, you mentioned it, what role does it play in simplifying the creation and execution of the pipeline within the Domino ecosystem? Yeah, and, uh, um, I, I think I mentioned this a little bit before, but um, I think for many of the sequencing-based assays, um, the community on, on a particular assay platform, on a particular type of instrumentation that's generate, being utilized to generate sequencing data for um, a specific type of purpose, um, in academia, usually they will start with something, and then um, commercial entities, industry will latch on to that and improve it, um, working hand in hand with academics to try and improve that uh, workflow and that pipeline. Um, so, you know, community driven effort to develop that and to bring in multiple different tools at multiple different steps is um, obviously a, a easier path. Um, for trying to gain the advantage of a community-driven effort as opposed to trying to implement something custom internally mm -hmm. uh, where you would have to do a lot of reading to understand these various tools to understand whether or not they were compatible, um, which ones were better in certain situations than others, and you just get them all for free kind of with some documentation, so it's nice. And from my perspective as an, in as an integrator, um, if we were working with if we had to work with custom data, or if we had to work with proprietary data, it would have taken us a long time to get access to that data. If we had to, if we had to work with um, not just Moderna, any of our customers' tools, um, their own uh, GitHub repositories that had their code, it would have taken time for us to get access to that. Because that, all these workflows are 
open source, they're public, they use publicly available data from, um, that we can, we can use. We, and they're built in, crowdsourced, documented. So they're, it's ready used for us to say, here, run this, now let's make it run in Domino. So that was, that's a really, really big advantage for us is to just get up to speed and hit the ground running. I great. think the, the, the world of data science where Domino is in at large, we're kind of seeing right now, we have uh, a few folks inside of the company that actually do something similar in the wild world of uh, Gen AI where we take research papers right now and we implement them inside of the platform. So it's good to see that we're standing on the shoulders of giants here. Um, could you discuss uh, any notable outcomes or successes um, as a result of this collaboration? Uh, you mentioned uh, improvement in uh, uh, platform optimization and uh, efficiency, time reduction, cost reduction. Can you share some figures with us or anecdotes? Yeah, sure. So um, all of those, of course. Uh, so, you know, like I, like I mentioned before, doing development in a single large EC2 instance uh, to develop some of these Nextflow-based uh, workflows is pretty cost uh, inefficient. Um, however, when you're doing your development within the NextFuse enabled dom domino environment, you really gain that uh, you're able to leverage and kind of appropriately resource individual steps. So a particular tool you know uh, of a specific data size as an input would only require, let's say, like a two CPU, uh, four gigabytes of RAM, but you can scale that parallelized because you're passing through maybe 200 samples at a time for that one execution. Whereas um, a, a step further down is perhaps maybe not uh, parallelizable and it's aggregating all the information together uh, next flow of the language is that doing that aggregation layer, but for that particular task execution, again, you could um, define that task as saying, okay, now I need a much larger resourced virtual machine to execute that specific task. Um, and so being able to customize and optimize um, those specific task level details really helps from the development process to be cost conscious. Um, and as I mentioned, Moderna is trying to be cost conscious in the cloud computing environment. And so that was one of the major drivers for um, being able to do this. Yeah, and one of the ways that that works out. So it, NextFuse, by the way, we haven't introduced the term. NextFuse is the name of the product, the plugin that we developed to allow Domino and, and NextFlow to work together. Um, one of the things that we did that I, we didn't mention is with this being able to customize for every step, either individually or based on um, other attributes of the step tags that are that are associated with the step, we can use that to select what hardware tier we use. So whether we're throwing a big instance at it or a small one, what compute environment that we use, which has the tools that we need. So that's that that's that's a big part of being enabling that. Um, yeah. And now when we talked, you also mentioned there was a data security element to the use of Domino. Yeah, that's right. Um, so internally, some of the time, we actually have um, some, some portion of Moderna employees have access to um, vendor-provided uh, data. Um, and it's tightly controlled who actually has access to that primary data and you know restricted to maybe a handful of people. However, the process data at the end of a pipeline should be accessible to all because it has been processed and you know whether it's metric data that come out of it, um, some count matrix data, et cetera, um, so that data scientists like yourselves could potentially leverage that um, as a, a new data set and combine it with um, existing data sets as well to perform some analytics. Um, and so, you know, being able to have um, access to the to the restricted access data, but then allowing uh, Domino to process that data, um, ultimately pumping out the the process data for others to share, um, storing it as a data set, and then enabling uh, everybody within um, a singular company to gain access and be able to search for that um, process data has been pretty powerful. Love that. Um, no project goes completely without hitches. Can you share some of the um, challenges that you faced during the integration? Um, because open source is not with it, like as smooth as it, well, it, it always is. But um, what were some of the challenges? How did you overcome them? Yeah, sure. So um, uh, Mike touched on this a little bit earlier as well. But uh, the bioinformatics community for each of these tools 
usually tries to hyper optimize the Docker container or the Docker images themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, typically, what you'll see is a single tool installed with an OS layer. Um, and that's pretty much it. It expects an input and an output for execution. Sometimes it's optimized where it has two uh, tools installed, where it's trying to stream the output from one tool to the um, as an input to the next tool for speed and efficiency purposes. But generally, these these um, Docker images are very very minimized. Um, for performance uh, and execution efficiencies. Uh, but they're all deploy, uh, usually published in the public and uh, open domain. In order to get them into Domino, um, there was some struggle because uh, um, you know Domino itself is using containerization and you need a layer, the Domino needs its layer to, to be able to track what is actually happening at the container level. And so one of the challenges was how do we actually pull in all of these uh, publicly deployed and already established uh, Docker images and bring them into Domino's environment so that we didn't have to do too much work and execute there. So that was a challenge that we tossed back to Mike and um, Mike addressed. <laughs> yeah, we, so what we did was we built a DevOps pipeline to enable Nextflow pipelines, which mm. so we, we, we scripted the creation of these tools so that if a new one comes online and the new ones are being released all the time, um, we have the ability to incorporate those in the, in the platform as well just by adding them in, storing them in the container registry that's affiliated, associated with Docker, um, and then being able to use it in future pipelines. Now, and you use Domino APIs in order to stand the yes, we did. inside we of the Yes, we use the Domino APIs, and that's a really important point. Um, we have, this is all enabled because of Domino's rich APIs, and I think that's one of the things that's underappreciated. I was just telling somebody about this at lunch. It's one of the things that's really underappreciated about Domino is, yes, it's a platform, yes, it's a platform that has a nice user interface, but also has a rich set of application programming interfaces that enable this sort of integration. And whatever you're using it for, you're going to use those in any, in any uh, hardcore or even mildly, uh, um, <laughs> and even, even a simple integration effort. Yeah, it's going to be tough. They're good to have. I was actually looking around to see one of our engineer, engineering leaders is here. I was hoping he would hear that in his ears because he was a big proponent of the API. Yes, I, 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 I'm glad about that. Um, to close and then to open the, 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 you guys to questions from the audience, um, what future directions and opportunities do you see downstream at Moderna and beyond that, uh, Mike, now that you guys are uh, next flow uh, uh, experts? What, what do you guys see uh, in the future? Yeah, so um, you know the next flow uh, language itself continues to develop. Um, and I was just telling uh, Mike a little bit earlier there, uh, the current version of Nextflow that we're using is DSL2. Uh, they're actually the community is already working on a DSL3 version that is probably going to be published um, at some point, either at the end of this year or beginning of next year. Um, and it's supposed to really lower the bar for entry for um, new uh, people introduced to Nextflow as a workflow language to be able to really. Um, uh, quickly develop these pipelines and be able to deploy them at scale. Um, so that's kind of really the next step. Um, there's a lot of uh, optimization work that we do internally at Moderna. So there are custom built pipelines that we optimize. Uh, and then also, and there was a little bit of touch on this, but um, I'm sure many of you are using things like AlphaFold 2 um, and you know AlphaFold, uh, the next version of AlphaFold was already released. Um, but if you actually understand what the code behind looks like, it's really, from an engineering perspective, a suboptimal engineered um, piece of code. Uh, and so one of the things that we attempt to do is because there are so many heavy users of AlphaFold 2 and it's a constant struggle to, to keep it running correctly in the environment that we have is to actually refactor that code as a Nextflow-based workflow and a, as a Nextflow-based pipeline. And so one of the things that I've asked my engineers to do is to, once we get to that point, to republish it back out to the open source community because there's nothing proprietary about that. We're just doing it for our own efficiency's sake. And then the community can improve on it. Yeah, that's right, exactly. From our perspective, um, the next steps, I think, for, for us are to keep, you keep, Domino keeps coming up with new releases, so we have to keep uh, upgrading um, NextFuse to make sure that it accommodates 
both new releases of Domino and new releases of, of Next Flow as it comes out. That's one thing. Um, one of the things also, was we, we were talking about this earlier, that I've, I've observed, this is a very mature community, the, the bioinformatics pipelines, is, especially the way that they're in NF Core. They use a, there's a lot of reuse. It's not just, it's not just they've, they've come around to the idea of pipelining. They've built these reusable tools. And I think that's something that um, the other, you know, it's, um, from a statistical computing environment, something that we've talked about, you know, pipelines, uh, GSK was talking about pipelines. And I think, actually, especially now with flows and Domino coming out, as we saw um, uh, demoed earlier this morning, there's an opportunity for other communities to use that built-in functionality to create these packaged S, uh, uh, pipelines that, can, that are metadata-driven based on what transformations you, want, you need to do on the data and what derivations you need to execute. Um, so that we can do this in a, a much more standard way. Obviously, as Al said, there's probably going to be, we'd, we'd like to take some of these pipelines and customize them for use in any individual uh, customer, but we certainly have that baseline to work with. And I think that's actually a really exciting. I'd love to see what this community has done and take that to a broader scale. Amazing. Thank you. So. It's good. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And Thank you. Congrats on the project. Thank you.